uh, I hope will come out of this, especially for the students, is the feedback. Uh, this is uh, the doctoral program which GZU is running on uh, within the HRM discipline. And I hope the feedback will not only enhance the quality of the proposals, but the entire research so that it's at a standard and at a level that it's a doctoral level. So in essence, the presence of Drs. Masha, uh, Harry and Chikungwa is exactly what an external examination pool would look like um, uh, in our institution. Three examiners who will give feedback and uh, and I hope that as the other colleagues as well, myself included, will use this feedback to be able to improve on um, aspects related to, to the work that we are doing. So how we will go about it? I think I only see Dabezitle um, Mfandaeza uh, here. I think Dabezitle, uh, you have to go first and then we'll give you 10 minutes. Um, uh, Ngabisa, what you can do for us as well, you can keep track of time, uh, maybe on your phone or something, and then create an alarm, uh, just unmute at uh, eight minutes to just give warning to say two minutes left uh, so that uh, the basically will uh, wrap up. And then thereafter, we will then give comments to the reviewers who are here, including uh, Ngabisa, who's also prepared a document. And then after that, we will ask the, um, we'll give a vote of thanks where the students will leave the uh, committee. And uh, well, then there's no need for that because the, 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 the documents will speak for themselves. We'll just give a, an, an outcome based on what the reviewers thought. And then we will then uh, conclude and obviously uh, chatter a way forward uh, after that. So with that being said, colleagues, um, um, I'm thankful and grateful for your attendance and hope that we will um, uh, have uh, fruitful deliberations. Uh, Ndabe, do you have slides to share? Or you're going to just speak from uh, where you are? Okay, we can't hear you. We still can't hear you. Maybe you need to click where it says join with computer audio or something because uh, we can see. Yeah, we can't hear you. No, we, 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 we are struggling to hear you. Uh, something is wrong. Uh, have you tried to join with computer audio? Mm -mm. I don't know, Dr. Nyambarwa, if you can assist us there, because we can see Ndabe is speaking, but there is no sound that is coming out. I've tried to look yes, on my uh, side to let say... Me, let me call him from this end and discover what's, what, what's bothering him. I'll come right. back to you soon. Uh, that's fine, Dr. Harry. Uh, you, you can send the feedback. And to any of our reviewers as well, you can send the feedback. What you can do also is just, um, as the student is presenting, just gloss through also the the, the, the proposal. We, we also welcome the feedback uh, as well. Uh, you see, I don't see patience here. 
we could have gone to the next student. Okay, patience is here. She's having challenges, but we can share my gadget. Yeah, I think let's do that. I'm really conscious about time, colleagues, uh, especially the time of these uh, senior members I've brought here. Okay, colleagues, so what we will do, let's let's go to patients while Ndabe's issue is being uh, sorted out. Patients will give you 10 minutes to present. Uh, Ngabisa will tell you after eight minutes, and then we'll then have uh, comments coming from the colleagues. Okay, uh, Prof. Good day, everyone. The structural model of a burden on decent work, Babwen was better. The moderating role of a uh, attribute. Uh, so, just to explain my topic, I'm going to test a more, I'm going to look at the influence of aesthetic labor burden on decent work in the Zimbabwe. Uh, oh, colleagues, I, I, I think there's a problem, guys. I, I, and research methodology. Okay, but patients, um, just, just hold on, patients. If possible, just come Ella. close to the device, whatever that you're using, because it's breaking up. So just come closer to the device, and then uh, we can we can we can hear you loud and clear. It, it's breaking up, and we 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 pick some words and lose some words. Hello, Prof. Yes, much better now. Go ahead. Okay. Um... Yes, uh, as part of my introduction, we are saying that the hospitality sector is a labor-intensive uh, industry, and it is so people-oriented, such that it relies on people for them to be able to achieve their goals. And therefore, it requires a sound human resources management. And um, some authors, including Prentice and Tycoon 2019, they posited that workers in the hospitality industry, they lack distance in their work, uh, and they also experience a lot of unfairness substantially and procedurally, meaning that in terms of how their issues are handled and in terms of bread and butter issues, they are at the losing end. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. From the yeah we, we've lost uh, Dr. Mpani. We can hear you. You're on the phone. We, we've lost patience as well. We we didn't hear. She just went quiet. Okay. Hello, Prof. Yeah. Go ahead. Hello, Prof. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. So I was saying that. Yes. So I was saying that the employees who work in this industry, besides it being labor intensive. They are treated unfairly, substantially, and procedurally. That is the bread and butter issues, and also how their issues are handled. It's unfair on the part of the employees. And related um, to these problems, we're saying that they also face precariousness, sexual and labor exploitation, work intensification, and also lack of uh, work life balance. Um, and we are also saying that globally, aesthetic labor has become a critical issue in today's workplace, especially in the hospitality industry. And this is according to Rikyo, Wida Mentaka, and Salinas 2019. And uh, these authors, they also, also submitted that um, the world is approaching an economy of aestheticism, which means that aesthetic skills, they're becoming more important is also qualifications, which means that it's not enough to have qualifications only, but you also need to possess the aesthetic skills. And we're also saying that countries in the global north 
are much concerned with this aesthetic labor skills that to the global south issues. Um, and this is mainly because of um, differences in circumstances, the economic uh, situation, the political situation, etc. And that explains why uh, countries uh, differ in how they view this issue of, of aesthetism. Um, and we're also saying that uh, style or looks have become a ploy. We are saying it has become a strategy to be equality, the quality of service that is rendered by a, a hotel outlet or a lodge. And we're also saying that uh, this has been already burdened employees. Remember, we said that um, it's a labor intensive hotel where there's work intensification such that employees normally they are multitasking. So these employees already they are burdened, but here are is this issue of style or looks, this issue of aesthetism, where we are saying that it's burdening the employees who are already burdened. These employees they have to invest into this aesthetism. For example, the issue of wearing uniforms, we are saying that. If you are um, on temporary employment or if you're a contract worker, um, you have to buy your own uniform so that you um, exude the expected aesthetic uh, skills or the expected appearance by the employer and the customers. And therefore, we're saying that's where the aesthetic labor burden comes into play. The already burden employee is burdened by this aesthetism. And you realize that according to the Zimbabwe National Statistics Authority 2014, 34% of the employees who are employed under this uh, industry, they are precarious workers. And this means that um, so many people work in these jobs and they suffer this challenge of aesthetic labor burden. Um, Okay, you've gone quiet again. All right, patience, you've gone quiet again. Is it me? Are, are the other colleagues still there? Yes, we can hear you, Prof. Yeah, I can't hear patients now. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, this is this is the inconvenience. Yeah, yeah. Continue. You just went quiet. Uh, I had lost network. Okay, continue. Uh, on my problem statement, I'm saying that. Yes, I'm saying that one of the problems that is being faced by the hospitality industry concerns issues to do with decent work. Like I violated that these employees who work in the hospitality industry, they suffer uh, precariousness, uh, they, suffer, they suffer exploitation. And because of that, we are saying that uh, there's, uh, there's a lack of decent work in the hospitality industry. Hello, Prof. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, so we are saying that uh, because of that, since people, they lack access to decent work, these people, they are unable to satisfy their survival needs, their social connection needs, even self-determination needs. Because if you don't have decent work, it's very difficult for you to survive, it's very difficult for you even to make connections with other people because you do not have a decent work. So because of that, I think uh, this issue needs attention, the issue of uh, decent work. And also this issue that they view employees as uh, a commodity when they work under this industry. They view them as brand ambassadors, as moving billboards. This also leads to the employee exploitation, which also adds on to the aesthetic labor burden. And also, we are also saying that globally, the labor turnover in this industry is between 30 to 300 percent. And this is according to Baum, Cheung, Kong, Crowley, and Mooney 2016. Um, <sighs> Uh, 
Okay, I, I think let's let's make a decision here, colleagues. There clearly there is a network issue going on, um, and and that's beyond our control. And uh, for for us to be waiting for connecting on and off, on and off, it's it's a huge inconvenience, because the meeting is being recorded. We will make the video available to the students. Uh, I've lost network. I'll yeah, let, let, I think patients. Oh, let's. Yeah. Let, let, I, I'm, I'm very worried that we, we are not getting a consistent network here and uh, it's, it's starting to become difficult to follow you. So uh, through you, Dr. Nyambarwa, I would like to just propose that uh, we give the reviewers, the assessors, the opportunity to give their feedback and we have a discussion. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what will happen when there are questions to be asked because the network for, for the student keeps uh, uh, disconnecting. It, 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 will that be fine, Dr. Nyambar, where we then go ahead, uh, the the recording will be made available in any case, so that we, we, we en enrich in the um, discussion now with the comments, because the, uh, the the issue of network is greatly affecting us. Yes, yes, Prof, I agree with you. Let's take that route. I okay. think that's the best way forward. All right. Um, re reviewers, uh, thank you, patients. Uh, reviewers, we will, um, in, in any way that you can, um, if, if you've got questions to ask, and I think the idea also is the student also response. Uh, let's see how the responses will go because of the situation. Um, yeah, let's, let's give it a shot and see how it will go. Let's start with... Um, Dr. Masha, I really enjoyed the comments that you wrote uh, and uh, I can actually give you permission to share so that you can also put your comments on the on the screen. All right. Uh, will that be Mabika? Mabika, yes. Oh, can you see the screen? Yes, we can. All right. F first of all, I I'd like to congratulate the student uh, for a very good proposal that, that she has written. And uh, going out of her way to look for recent literature, that is very impressive, given the circumstances back home you know, getting information sometimes is difficult. The introduction, I say, is well written, but it could be shortened. You know, it is. It, it looks a bit long, and the rest can go into the actual thesis. It's, it's quite quite long the introduction. Um. Also, in text referencing. For example, Nick and Baum, and I know why this happens, is because they have done that mentally. When you when you work with Mendeley, it gives you things like this, whereby it should be like that. Uh, throughout the, the entire proposal, please go through it. Statement of the problem is also uh, very long because the candidate gives us different studies showing this and that. That's okay. In the actual thesis, you can bring it in slightly before the standard of the problem. Uh, for instance, to say simply, uh, several studies on blah, blah, blah exist. And you can actually put into brackets those, those authors once you've done that, e.g. blah, blah, blah. However, there's a gap regarding blah. Thus, this study seeks to shed more light on how employees in this Bible studies industry Navigate and balance the new expectations, customer requests, and, and industrial decorum. Two paragraphs is enough. So remove all this in red that I've, I've put here. You will take it into the main thesis, slightly before statement of the problem. Objectives are impeccable, no, no problem at all. Hypothesis impeccable. Literature review is good. I like the fact that. The significance is good. I like the fact you've linked it to, to hypothesis. That's very good. Uh, research methodology is a good attempt. 
the stratified sampling technique, class of technique and random sampling technique are going to be used whereby, now I you, you should try to interact with this, whereby the researcher will select a smaller population from a large population so that they can present the rest of the population. And if you have some reference from literature, maybe uh, someone who told this, maybe you can say Anderson and Poppy, maybe 2019, who talks about this uh, technique these techniques and blah, blah, blah. If you don't, it's fine. But at PhD level, we would like to see a, an academic reference to that, OK? So I've given you this example for you to interact with your sampling. The researcher shall also use random sampling technique by selecting respondents randomly, whereby the researcher will group hotels and lodges in Masvingo province in clusters, you know, that interaction. Shall interaction. And then delete this statement. Uh, at PhD level, we don't necessarily need you to define. Just go straight. At master's level, you're allowed to define, give different examples and the rest. But at PhD level, your proposal is very small. Maybe in the thesis you can, but even that is not necessary. Just go straight to the point. Or uh, you could say something like the researcher ensure the instrument is reliable so that the researcher can find the extent to which finding blah, 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 blah. Interact with it, but don't define. Interact with it. OK, delete this as well and then delete all this in your methodology. In fact, the reason why I say you should delete all this is because you're using quantitative. If you're using quantitative, we don't need your trustworthiness here because that's for qualitative. You only need reliability and validity. Delimitation is okay. Ethical considerations, Revisit this entire changes accordingly. This must be revisited the entire session. Delete this statement. We don't need to define uh, ethics. Okay. I like I like that one, but change it to the researcher will supply potential respondents with information about potential risks and benefits of taking part in the study. Can you see? And then you are interacting with Elman et al. All respondents will have the right to choose what will and what will not happen to them, Co et al 2021. In Co et al 2021, I know this book, try to go to the chapter dealing with ethics and see who exactly is the writer there. Because what Co, did, Co is the editor. I know this book very well. So go and see who exactly the writer is in terms of ethics. And I don't blame you. Sometimes you don't go and check each chapter written by who and who. So go and check who the actual writer was. And that writer will be in core et al. Okay, that one changed to respondents will be allowed sufficient time. This is what I call interacting with your, with your study. By doing this at master's level is okay, but at PhD level, don't define, just tell us how you have understood it by interacting with it. Otherwise, overall, I have passed this uh, very well. The student has done very, very well in this, uh, in this uh, proposal. And I say it's accepted pending correction to the supervisor. supervisor. So you and the supervisor uh, sit down together he should ensure that these changes are corrected. And then with me, I see no problem with this well-written uh, proposal. It has got two impeccable research objectives and hypothesis, they are impeccable. I, I, I love that. Otherwise, congratulations from me and uh, uh, well done. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Masha. And I think the, the recording is noted. If I were to ask you, Dr. Masha, so that we also just don't have a one-way conversation, is there a question you would like to ask the students so that we also see the students' uh, potential to respond on the spot to some of these uh, issues uh, 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 that you may have raised? I think my my main question is will be around what the student understood by this here, for instance, uh, credibility and the rest. Why why did, did she think that this is important in in this particular study that uh, uses quantitative? Good method? question. Yeah, good question. Uh, patients, would you like to respond? Maybe maybe she had a reason to use that. Um, Prof, can you come again on the question? I didn't quite get it. Why did you include the section on trustworthiness uh, in this uh, proposal when those are issues mostly covered in qualitative research? Why would you include those issues in quantitative research? Uh, well, I just thought uh, maybe they would apply one way or the other. But well, this is a learning curve. I actually um, accept the corrections from Doc. And I'm just saying thank you. And I'm noting it. I'm going to correct it. Because really, for quantitative research, um, the researcher is actually divorced from the research itself, unlike qualitative. So I think I overlooked that. And thank you, Doc, for not all right yeah i think i think I it's a lesson available through Prof. Yamurindi and then send them to you yeah i i, I think uh, dr marsha's uh, point there is a lesson for all of us particularly the students uh for us to be aware that um we, we just don't put uh, stuff into the proposal. Everything must be thought of and guided by uh, obviously the objectives and what we want to, to achieve. And I appreciate um, um, Dr. Masha for that uh, attention to detail. It's, it's greatly appreciated. Um, and then uh, I will go to um, uh, Dr. Chikungwa. If I could say something positive about Dr. Chikungwa is that uh, she, 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 she's one person I not only confide with in terms of academic matters, but she's a person I really, really enjoy picking their brain on matters of institutional politics and so forth, because uh, she, she understands those matters having a very rich administrative uh, role. So, uh, Dr. Chikungwa, I, I'm looking forward to your comments uh, and, and just the inter interaction that you have with the student right now. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Prof, um, for the opportunity. Um, colleagues, uh, without the high note that uh, Prof. Chinyamundi has saying for me, um, I can say myself, I'm an imaging researcher imaging academic because I've just joined the academia. I'm not trying to navigate it. But back to your uh, proposal, um, patients. Uh, it was wonderful, well written. Congratulations, you did a wonderful job. Um, maybe in, in, in getting a lot of information, you ended up writing way too much. So I would like to, um, uh, um, what second, what Dr. Dr. Masha has proposed that some of the things that we have put in, unfortunately, I won't be able to quickly identify, but I think Dr. Masha, Dr. Dr. Masha has already indicated those areas where you can remove most of those things that you have written, they are good, but the, it makes the proposal way too long. I have also gone to your statement of the problem. I like the way you have actually indicated the many, um, I think you, 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 you indicated four, four different uh, uh, standpoints that um, are justifying why you are actually taking the study, which is very commendable. 
well done on that. And also your objectives and the hypothesis are well written and are clear. That is uh, very commendable. But there is, uh, there is the part um, on uh, research ethics that are uh, uh, um, uh, going down. I've gone straight down to your, to your research ethics. I still uh, support the part that uh, Dr. Masha indicated that uh, they are some of the, the, the the, um, I'm trying to navigate straight to, I'm on your proposal. Uh, I just want to get to the point, to, to the place where I want to talk about. Okay. There is need to uh, avoid the definitions in this case, where you just um, mention the methodology that you are going to use or whatever that you have selected to utilize within your study, you go straight to the point of what is it that you want, then you justify it probably with literature, you justify why you are actually thinking that that would be most acceptable for your for your kind for, for your study without having to 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 give definitions. Of of uh, uh, of the the the, uh, the method that we would have chosen, and then on the ethics part, I'm failing to get to the part uh, on on your proposal. I wanted to be very specific. Okay, thirty thirty seven pages. Okay. Well, Let me not waste uh, time, Prof. Uh, I, will, I will identify the part and get back to, to you as other colleagues go on. Otherwise, that was my last uh, 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 that was my last point on the proposal. Other than that, uh, I think she has done a wonderful job. She just needs to correct some of those things uh, 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 and shorten some of those areas. She has done a sterling job. Especially, I was so impressed with the statement of the way she has justified it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Chukungwa. And I think that's a that's a good compliment, particularly the if the statement of the problem is clear and um, it's well argued, that ultimately uh, positions the importance of a contribution, which is what a, a PhD is about. A, an important scholarly contribution uh, or addition to the to the body of knowledge. Um, then we go to. Um, I, I also acknowledge the presence of Dr. Shaba, Dr. Herring Shaba, who is a senior lecturer at Walter Sisulu University. Again, uh, from our uh, colleagues and friends who are who are here. Uh, Dr. Shawa, thank you for joining us. We are looking at the proposal of uh, Mabika patients. Uh, so uh, just uh, stay put. I'll give over to Dr. Harry, Tinashe Harry from Rhodes University, to tell us what you think, Dr. Harry, on the presentation uh, and your general comments or even interrogation to the student on any issues that you may have. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, it's unfortunate that I hadn't had much time to go over the proposal in detail, but going through the proposal, as Dr. Marsha has mentioned, uh, the proposal is too long. There are a lot of stuff that has to be cut out because it is a proposal. Maybe 10, 15 to 20 pages will be fine if it is a proposal. And some of the language that the student was using, such as um, firing, we need to be using formal language when you are writing a proposal. So instead of firing, you use dismissing. And the other thing as well, I'm gonna have made the focus of the content that I have looked at. The uh, thing is uh, saying that contract employment has affected the cognitive capacity of the employees. It's something that I did not understand. How is uh, contract employment affecting the cognitive capacity of people? Maybe the student can address that later on. And also, um, in fact, uh, Doctor 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 uh, Harry, sorry to interject. I would like the student to address that one now because that's an important um, point. Because 
everything that is put in the proposal must be well thought of. So do you mind just rephrasing the question and then patients will be able to uh, uh, give us uh, comments or a, a, a response to the question that you just asked. Okay, so what I want to understand is how does contract employment affect the cognitive capacity of our employees? Okay, um, thank you very much, Doc. Uh, I was thinking that um, since these employees are employed on short temporal basis, their contract type is um, on short term basis. I was thinking that how the treatment that they receive from the employer actually affects their cognitive uh, skills as employees. I was just thinking because these employees, they are already burdened uh, with uh, the working conditions. And here comes the issue of aestheticism and uh, bringing these two issues together, I think it will actually affect their uh, cognitive skills, but I tend to be corrected. Is it the cognitive uh, capacity that is affected or it is the well-being? Well, maybe I would say the well-being of employees. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll take it it's actually a learning curve. I'll take it as the... Okay. And, uh, for, for, for me, it's, sorry to interject there. For me, I think th this reveals another problem that we may have uh, reading the proposal again. We should stop this habit of um, putting commentary into a document uh, that we are not able to explain. And this is a very good classical exercise. The colleagues that um, uh, are here will we, we'll tell you we work together. Uh, I believe that every sentence that is written in a manuscript or any document must be able to make sense. So if you are not able to explain yourself, uh, it, it's not good enough to be constantly saying it's a learning curve, it's a learning curve. You see, think of it this way. The next person who will read your work is an external examiner who will be so concerned to say, but why put it when you can't explain it or when it's vague and it doesn't make sense? And I've seen it happen where students have failed and, uh, and delayed themselves. So the appeal here is flagged by Dr. Harry is that please, please, please make sure as you read your work, think about what you're writing. Don't just put stuff in. And also the lack of evidence around it, empirical evidence to support some of these things. We are not asking you to just uh, pluck things from sources or from think about each and every line that uh, you're writing. Thanks a lot, Dr. Harry. Sorry to interject, but I think your, your comment there uh, required me to, to, to say something and uh, you can go ahead. Okay. And uh, there are some mistakes uh, within the content, such as six consecutive weeks. Six consecutive weeks, which means it's more than a month. And then it says six consecutive weeks in one month. So it's something that you have to go through and edit those things to make sure that they are in line. Is it six consecutive weeks in a year or is it four weeks? I'm, I'm not sure what exactly what you meant with that. And the other thing is, uh, there is a claim within uh, your, is it the introduction that aestheticism has been uh, popular around in, Zim in Zimbabwe since around 1990s. Uh, there is no any evidence that is supporting that claim. So if you, it is possible, please do provide some evidence to support that claim. And um, the other thing is on the empirical literature. Yes, uh, the empirical literature was done well, However, I would have preferred to have uh, you defining the concept, the construct that you are looking at first before you look at the relationships that are, that are there between the construct that you are looking at. And from the information that I'm seeing, I'm not quite seeing that you have addressed the, the relationship uh, between this construct that you are looking at, your aesthetic labor, your decent work, your employee attributes. Yeah, speaking under correction, if you really looked at uh, the relationships that are there between all the constructs that you are looking at. Um, 
thank you so much, Doc. Um, I looked at, I, I read through articles mm -hmm. on those specific uh, constructs. So I wasn't uh, very sure I could, uh, should I put that now or maybe when I'm now writing chapters. Because uh, you are working on your proposal currently. So what you are trying to do is to look at the gap that we have. What is the gap? So that's where you find your gap within the literature. If you look at the relationship between the constructs, if you look at the empirical literature you have right now, it's mostly description of the constructs individually. So it is something that you also have to look at. What is the relationship between the constructs? Uh, the context in which these studies have been conducted. So where does your study fit in within that literature that we have? I okay. think Not that, that should be all from my side from now. Thank you so much, Prof. Oh, class as well. Oh, also, uh, we just the theory, sorry about the theory. You have uh, you based your study on the psychology of working theory. Why psychology of working theory? There are so many theories that are looking at various uh, concepts that you have within your proposal. So what I want to understand mm -hmm. why the psychology of working theory, why have you selected to use that? Okay, the psychology of work theory deals with uh, decent work mostly. So since the study is looking at uh, decent work as one of the variables, I saw it fit to use it as um, my theoretical framework. And is it articulated within the proposal? What I'm saying? Yes. Uh, no. Because we need to rationalize, why are you selecting that particular theory in a pool of so many theories that you can look at, that you can base your study on? Uh, thank you, Doc. I'm taking the point. I'll actually include that. Why I've chosen the psychology of work theory. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, that should be all from my side from now. Thank, thank you, thank you, Doctor Harry. I think there is another lesson. Um, uh, you must be able to also justify rationale leading to the choices that you are making, not only in terms of the methods that you are using but also in terms of the um, uh, epistemological and ontological grounding that your research is based on. And, and I appreciate that, uh, Dr. Harry. Um, and then our final reviewer for this, oh no, was, before our final reviewer, we have uh, Nabisa who also give comment. Uh, Dr. Shaba, uh, I'll, I'll give over to you to comment on candidate Mabika's uh, proposal. Thank you, Prof, uh, and uh, all my colleagues that uh, uh, have joined the meeting. My apologies for joining the meeting late. Uh, just been meeting after meeting. I started in the morning. I went to a, my to a school where my child is studying. There was a meeting there. I rushed from that meeting to come and join the workload making meeting here yeah, in the department and we are just finalizing a uh, moment ago. But um, I'm, 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 I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing here. And um, thank you, Prof, for giving me this opportunity to be part of this session. And thank you to the presenters um, uh, for the uh, good work. The reason why you are here is to get a uh, feedback so that you can go back and improve your work. I'm sure Prof have already highlighted that every PhD candidate is really, when you get to this stage, you really get that stage fright. But um, on the contrary, this is the moment that you should be looking forward to. You must be happy to be here so that you get this feedback. At the end of the day, it just improves you as a person, it improves you academically, it improves your attitude towards your PhD and probably to give you that zeal to finish it in, in due time. Uh, patients, I've read uh, your work um, here and there. 
let me say, I'm not going to give you much feedback here on this platform um, because I'm still yet to finish reading your work. And Prof knows, um, I normally prefer to give detailed feedback uh, on the document itself. I will send it to Prof, he will review my comments, whether he agrees or disagrees with them, he will forward the document to you with the detailed comments. But what uh, I would want to highlight to you is um, the, the objectives that you have formulated. Uh, for example, you are saying the primary objective to, to test a structural model on the influence of aesthetic labor burden on decent work in the Zimbabwean hospitality sector. And at the end of the day, the, your primary objective falls short of apparently highlighting that your title has got a moderating variable, and that's very critical, okay? You have got a predictor variable, you have got a, a dependent variable, you also have got a mm -hmm. moderating variable, yet your primary objective doesn't sum up that particular aspect. That's a serious shortfall, right? And then you also go further to secondary objectives to say, to examine the influence of aesthetic labor burden on decent work in the hospital sector. That's right, to examine the moderating role of employee attributes on decent work. Um, your, 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 your main object, your, your, your predictor variable, I'm assuming employee attributes, it's a, um, Prof, we call it that, is it a dimension or a construct of um, aesthetic labor burden? Is that correct? It could be, yes, it's a, it's a dimension or an, an element, if you like. And my assumption is it has been introduced very well in the introduction. If you have not done so, that's another issue that we'll have to look at. All the constructs that how you are going to measure your predictor variable, your moderating variable, as well as your dependent variable, all those things should come far much before the objectives are outlined. That is in the introduction session, all those things must be covered in detail. Uh, we need to know the, the overall um, uh, dimensions of, um, of, 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 of labor burden, uh, aesthetic labor burden, before we even come to the formulation of um, um, a second objective becomes it will be like a new construct or a new concept that you are trying to introduce um, later on. So the third object being to test the aesthetic labor burden. So that's what really confused me there to say, okay, here you are talking about a construct and now you are talking about the overall aspect. Shouldn't you be consistent there and continue to mention other constructs of labor burden? Because this labor burden is already highlighted uh, um, uh, in the, um, uh, what do you call this, in the primary objectives. Because remember, the purpose of having secondary objectives, it's more like you are saying, these are the steps that I'm going to take, right, to measure the main variables that you have indicated there. So we need to see those steps towards achieving the overall goal being the, uh, so you cannot, in my understanding, you can't be really utilizing the whole of our goal. You need to subdivide that goal so that it becomes the legally tasks that you are going to carry out that will lead to the overall achievement of the main goal being your primary objectives. So that should come out there in your second objectives. You have formulated your, uh, your so I, my assumption is you are going to revisit your primary objectives as well as your secondary objectives, because as I see them right now, they really do not give weight at what you intend to do, right? Going, you have also formulated the hypothesis. Your hypothesis will have to be anchored on the secondary objectives that you are going to formulate, formulate there, right? But what I also realized is this aspect of the research model that you developed, whereby you have, um, let me rush down there. Uh, the search model, that is figure one. We now present the search model of the study, right? You are saying employee attributes, there is the first dimension being physical attractiveness, right? Displayed positive emotions, uh, helpfulness. All these things, they have not been discussed in the objective, that is secondary objectives there. Burden of, of which you remember when I mentioned that you need to show that these are the 
dimensions or constructs. These things need to be articulated and they should come out in the objectives of the study and a secondary objective because these are the legal steps that you are going to utilize to achieve the overall goal. So these things are not really mentioned there in the secondary objectives, right? And then burden of aesthetic labor, you are not really showing there the sub construct in my understanding if you are going to design a model and indicate a burden of aesthetic labor then being the main construct what about the sub construct that you are utilizing um, as, 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 as a subhead or as a secondary objectives to achieve you should indicate we need to know because remember this is a model so a model must apparently show it's everything that it touches on right because if you are saying burden for aesthetic labor I can simply say, uh, so you're also talking about work engagement in there, it's part of it. So you need to delineate, show us what is burden of aesthetic labor as far as this study is concerned, right? And the line, and you also go back to decent work there, if there are sub of decent work, indicate them right there in that particular model, right? The, uh, the, the main issue that I'm coming to here is the lines that we have shown there. In a model, when you're developing a research model, particularly in a quantitative study like this one, each line here represents a hypothesis. So your hypothesis should really speak to this model or this model should conform to the hypothesis. And that is not yet represented here. So as, 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 as you are going back to revise your main objectives, your main objectives, your secondary objectives, as well as your a research hypothesis, then you also need to come back to make sure those things are aligned to this research model. So as I've indicated uh, earlier, uh, I'm going to give a thorough feedback in the document and also suggest how you can, how you can improve it. And then I'll email that to Prof and then Prof will uh, uh, go through those comments, adjust where necessary and then forward the document to you. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Shava. I really, really appreciate your your, your comments, and um, uh, th th this is noted and, and well appreciated. Um, the, the next uh, opportunity I'll give is to probably the youngest member of this committee that we've got this afternoon, uh, who is a very, very budding um, researcher and uh, clinical psychologist and working with me as an intern. Ngabisa Nikelo. I, I requested and I gave Ngabisa the, the request of saying, Ngabisa, um, these students often take us for granted. We ask them to make important changes, and sometimes they don't make those changes concerning issues of referencing. Uh, here is the mandate, and Ngabisa comes from a background of um, psychology, so she knows. Um, she knows um, uh, APA formatting. So I just gave her the mandate to say, please comment on the technical adherence of the document because sometimes students put sources that are not cited in the text, in the document. And sometimes they put, uh, they don't reference certain sources. So I, I, I'm very concerned about that, particularly when I look at some of my current students. So Nabisa, I give over to you. Uh, you can uh, share the um, the referencing. Yes, I, 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 yeah, that's the other clarity we need. Thanks for for pointing that out. Um, uh, but but let's let's go with the the comments and see uh, even if it was the APA format, we we will need to talk about the GZU to to clarify to us what what uh, style they prefer. Uh, Nabisa, I give over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, greetings to you all colleagues. Uh, when it comes to the uh, references, um, the student uh, did uh, put the references in an alphabetical order, which is correct, uh, but um, the references which are in text but are missing on the reference list. That's uh, the first thing. And secondly, the spacing, the line spacing, APA. In APA, we do not use 1.5, but we use double. So that's another thing that needs to be corrected. Uh, thirdly, the use of italics. Um, uh, in APA, 
we only use italics on the name of the journal. That is the name of the journal has to be in italics. I see here that uh, the name of the journals are in italics some, but some are not in italics. So I think that's another thing that the students will have, the student will have to look at. And thirdly, there is the DOI, which has to be also included when using the APA referencing style. Um, since the DOI um, is important because it identifies the content and provides a persistent link to its location on the internet. So uh, that is all from me, Prof. That is all that I have seen that is not here on the reference pages, just the missing references, which are in text, but are not on the reference list. And also the line spacing and the use of italics and the DOI, which needs to be added on some of the references which are on the reference list. Thank you. Hello, are we still on? Uh, I think we are. Uh, th thanks a lot, uh, Ngabisa, for the, the comment. Um, so let's go into, uh, and, 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 and Ngabisa will make available that report. No, the, the technical adherence is very important because we have a lot of people who then write to us and say, look, um, <laughs> the, yeah, we need to know, and, and Dr. Yambarwa and uh, Dr. Mpani, you'll have to help us there by telling us what is the uh, set criteria for your referencing but that that's that's neither here nor there because the critical thing that Nabisa also raises missing references inconsistent sources and and, and and spacing issues and i think those are generic issues that need to be addressed and uh, basically i'll give you a time to present now uh and then Nabisa after eight oh dr harry go ahead your hand is up yeah, I just wanted to add on the referencing. If it is APA, uh, if you look at APA, the latest edition, mm -hmm. if it is in text, it's more than three authors. You have yeah. to use at all from onset. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need to put all the three names there. So Correct. it's something that they have to look at as well. Correct. A APA, the latest formatting, uh, uh, you don't need to put all three authors. Correct. I agree with you. Oh, oh thanks, Dr. Harry. Uh, and Abe, it's your turn now, and I hope your connection will hold now. Uh, just unmute. Nabil? Uh, good okay, afternoon, perfect. Prof. Go ahead, we can hear you. All right. Unfortunately, I can't share my slides because I have resorted to using my phone instead of the of the laptop, it's, which is giving me some challenges here. So I'll be presenting on my topic, and the topic is entitled "The Moderating Role of Decent Work on the Relationship." between precarious employment and employee well-being in selected retail outlets. So maybe just for a brief background, they were saying uh, the emergence of precarious employment in Zimbabwe uh, has been uh, exacerbated by the increased number of uh, high school and college that are being turned into the labor market 
uh, every year. And so by so doing, we have more people chasing too few jobs. And then as a result, uh, it's the survival of the fittest. And the people just pick any job that they think uh, can save them a day. And as a result, uh, this reduces the quality, quality of jobs that the, the organizations can the to the to the employees so i'll also look at the the the, the um, statement there unfortunately my laptop looks like it is frozen so i can't access my my slide child prepared the, due to increase the number of college graduates into the into the market uh, most of the jobs that are being offered today in the in the retail sector are precarious jobs. Uh, like employees are working long hours. They are paid low income. They have got limited uh, 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 social protection. Uh, there is limited uh, dialogue to to so that the the, the, the employees. Can, 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 can also offer years on how they feel they should be treated. And all these uh, uh, things, when they lack this, uh, result in the psychological and physical effect on the employees, which will affect their overall uh, 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 well being. So, the, this study actually would like to. Just we would like to look at how the introduction or the promulgation of sent to work by the LO, ILO will have any effect on the people who are working under precarious. And then next, I'm going to also look at the at the research model that we are going to use. Unfortunately, I won't be able to, to show it, but we have got three variables there that we are going to be looking at. The first one is the independent variable, which is the precarious employment. And then we have the employee well-being. We want to look at whether a precarious work, uh, yes, and an influence on employee well-being. And then the third variable there, which is our moderator value, value is this we are looking at whether the introduction of decent work in precarious working conditions can can help save uh, our employees in terms of, in terms of uh, uh, getting a decent work. Then the other aspect that we are we will look at in our proposal is the significance of the of the of this study. The significance of this study is it will also help uh, uh, add to the existing uh, uh, literature that is already there. But if we look on the Zimbabwean scenario, we we'll find that there is limited. There is the limited the research on on decent work, and the, so as a result, we hope that this uh, study will will add some some information, will add some literature uh, let me try and just get to my my, I think it's starting my. Okay, it looks like I'm still having that challenge, but the other significant of this study is uh, we hope that it will also enlighten the, the trade unionist. Uh, they can gain an appreciation of what 
uh, the, what, the, what decent work implies to their member organization so that they can also find ways of, 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 uh, of helping their members in terms of uh, accessing decent work. Uh, the significant uh, contribution of this study will be, uh, uh, it will complement the government initiatives on the adoption of decent work through availing evidence of research to help with the police adoption and implement, implementation promulgated by the United Nations. As you can realize that uh, decent work is also part of uh, SDGs and the decent work uh, falls under SDG number eight. So the research will try and establish uh, the extent of implementation or of acceptance of uh, decent work uh, in the Zimbabwean economic uh, sectors. And then we are also, this is that uh, this proposal also looked at the literature review whereby we looked at the empirical literature where we are saying, we look, where I looked at the precarious employment and its effects on employee well being. Like we're saying, uh, precarious working conditions affect the psychology, the physical being of human beings, and as a result, they, they suffer total uh, 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 well-being. Then I also looked at the dimensions. It will also look at the dimensions of employee well-being, and it will also look at the decent work, how it moderates the effects of employee, precarious employment on employee well-being. Uh, the, the, the proposal also looked at the theoretical literature, uh, which formed the, the, the basis uh, of this research. And for precarious employment, this uh, research will be backed by the insider-outsider theories, uh, whereby structural, structural changes in the labor market and other reforms that take place in the labor market uh, result in a typical work. For example, in the Zimbabwean scenario, in the 1990s, the Zimbabwean government adopted the, the, the ESAP, Economic Structural Adjustment Program, which liberated the, 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 the labor market, and by so doing, it created a situation whereby the employees were stripped of their bargaining rights. And as a result, most of the employees were, 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 were vulnerable to, to precarious uh, employment. And um, the other theory that we will form the basis of our research is the self-determination theory. Uh, Web, which assumes that individuals will, will interact with their social environment to satisfy their needs. So it means that the, 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 the working environment uh, is a, a, an important place where employees will interact uh, with their environment. So in the end, if the environment is not conducive because of precarious working conditions, there is a probability that they won't be able to achieve or satisfy their needs, be they physical or psychological, and in the end, it will affect their, their well-being. Then uh, the, other, the other theory that, form, that will be added to form the basis of this research is the psychology of work theory by Duffy, Ryan Duffy, uh, which explains that decent work uh, leads, to, leads to need satisf satisfaction or work fulfillment and uh, ultimately well-being. This uh, theory explains that, uh, it explains the process of uh, securing decent work and it is 
it is based on 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 the following predictors of a decent work, which are some which some which are psychological and some which are contextual. Mm -hmm. The the psychological. Uh, Please go to your uh, go to your go to your methodology quickly. Uh, you only have two minutes left. Methodology. Uh, we are going to use the positivist approach with, with the positivist paradigm with the quantitative approach, and then we will use the survey design, uh, whereby we will use the simple random sampling technique, the population. It will consist of shop floor employees in the town of Pipebridge, including the key informant, key informants. And then for data collection, we'll use decent work skills by Daffy and the employee precariousness scale by Vives et al. Then the employee well-being scale will be used to measure the employee well-being. Then for analysis, we will use the structural equation modeling, whereby we are saying uh, the first thing that will be used for analysis there is CFA to examine the, the possible models to be used. Then after model identification and adequacy, the chi-square will be used uh, for, will be used for to identify the, 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 the adequacy of the, of the model. And we can also use other indices like fee, goodness or fit. And uh, there are quite a number of them, but I just chose chi square and goodness of fit. Then once we validated, in a once validated, we assemble all these in our structural model to enable execution of the structural equation modeling. So for the moderation effect, we will use the moderation a moderated regression model to, to measure how decent work can uh, uh, moderate the, the effects of uh, moderate the relationship between precarious employment and the employee well-being. That's that's all I have for the for my for my proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Ndabe, for the presentation. And uh, I give over to our um, panelists. Uh, I'll again start with Dr. Masha uh, to, to, to give us your feedback. Ndabe, please mute. Uh, there's a lot of feedback coming from your, from your machine. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Clear now. Dr. Masha. OK. Um. Here's my feedback. Your introduction uh, captures the sense of the study. Uh, just a, a few small things, the referencing, for instance, Duffy et al. in NAM. I think it should be Duffy et al. Uh, comma, 2016, cited in, yeah, I think it should be like that. Uh, look at the referencing. I think, as I said earlier, once you use Mendeley, you should be very careful with the, with the referencing. Um, statement of the problem. Yes, very well explained. I say, but I would have expected a sentence such as, Studies on decent work are available in the literature, but studies that focus on the adoption of decent work moderate the influence of precarious employment on employees are scarce, or there's a scarcity. Thus, the adoption of decent work moderate the influence of precarious employment on employee well being can heighten understanding given these contextual gaps. Okay, then this study explores the moderating role, blah, blah, blah. I would expect a statement like that. If you wish to, you could review it like that. Objective. You need to show us your primary and secondary objectives through subtitles, okay? This is the primary objective and these are the secondary objectives. So attend to this. 
I also think that nine objectives are too many. What I would suggest you do is cluster them, assemble them into one cluster. And I'm, I'm giving you an example here. Look at this student here, okay? To investigate the extent to which relational based factors, okay? And then organizational based factors and reward based factors predict the level of engagement of educators in private family business schools. In relational based factors, this candidate has three. In organizational based factors, three. Reward based factors, also three. And then the candidate now, the student here, goes to show through hypothesis. The, the student here uses null and alternative, okay? Communication, trust, interpersonal skills, okay? Are for, okay, there is, yes. So you could take some of these objectives of yours, cluster them into one. I don't know how we can do that. And then the hypothesis will tell us that Oh, all these nine objectives, you're now dealing with them. If it's possible to do that, nine is really too much, really too much. Four, I'll say yes, up to five. I end up by saying, however, if the supervisor are happy with the nine objectives, you can leave them as they are. Excellent explained, hypothesis, hypothesis are very well explained. Precarious work positively influences employee well being, should be H1. So, yeah, leave some space, you know, H1, H2, H3, et cetera. It, 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 it's, it's like that. You should just put a bit of, you know, to leave some space for all your hypotheses. Significance is okay. Literature review after the theory, after each theory, maybe write a sentence to explain how it leads to the readers. It leads to the, to the study, sorry. And how this theory is the study after each theory. You could even put a small subheading. I'm ever impressed with the choice of, of theories by the, the candidates and how the candidates lead to hypothesis, very impressive. Methodology is well written. Um, since you're using quantitative studies, you use respondents. So in the entire proposal, remove the word participants. They are for qualitative studies. These answer questions in interviews, for qualitative studies, you say respondents. You will find that information in uh, Saunders and Lewis, uh, 2018, page 160. Yes, try to get uh, an academic reference for this. Uh, the researcher will ensure that every unit in the population stands a chance of being selected to take part in the study. Who says this? Maybe Lady and Or Omrod. 2020. You know, put an author who this information can be related to that uh, writer. Okay, about the probability or the simple random technique. Also, as I said to the other person, please um, try not to define things like this. There are four types of research paradigms. No, we don't need to hear that, you know. We don't need to hear that. So all this in red, I'll just go. Okay. D delete all this.
Yeah. Dimitation is good. Ethical considerations. I like the way the candidate interacts with his or her literature. In, for example, the statement, ah, I love this. The ethical challenges, anonymity, confidentiality, and privacy will be guaranteed in this research. Participants of the study will be asked for permission to conduct the study. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Gozwana is the one who tells us about the fact that um, participants are contacted, uh, uh, participants are, are asked for permission to go to before the, 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 the study is conducted. Even here, if you can, try to find an author there, maybe Patton and New Heart, 2018. Because these, these are two different statements. This information here on informed consent, I will change it if I were you to, to read like this one here. Remove the, all the ones in red, remove them. Before the research begins, the researcher will obtain informed consent uh, from the respondents by fully disclosing the procedures of the proposed research before requesting for permission to provide the study. Yes, Hupan Schindler. Okay. Having made full disclosure, Responses will be made aware if they can draw from the study anytime. I, I know already who says this. This is part of a new heart. Even Newman says this. Newman 2014. Pattern a new heart 2018. Why am I saying this? This you, you are not an authority to tell us this without telling us who said it. This is not your work, okay? Despite consenting to take part in the research, you've already mentioned this under informed consent, so delete this statement. Cohen, Manuel, and Morrison, there is now a 2018 version, which I've put there. Um, I've also given you some stuff on ethical considerations. You may want to consider them in terms of participants' rights, informed consent, confidentiality, and anonymity. Plus, I've also given you uh, the references here, if you may want to consider them and, and put them there. So, so that your part on ethical considerations look gives us wow of a PhD uh, student. But discuss with your supervisor and, and, and see and see what, what, what you'd like to change. Although these are my comments. Um, your reference style is excellent. And I've also said the same thing, accepted pending corrections to the satisfaction of their supervisor. Very well written, very modern sources, congratulations. You've gone all out to look at information, especially in your introduction and background. You know the topic very well, congratulations, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Masha. Truly appreciate it. Uh, let's go to, let's skip now, maybe Dr. Shava, you're next. And then uh, Dr. Harry and uh, Dr. Chikungwa and then Abisa. I think we can keep it uh, brief, colleagues, so that we meet the four o'clock closure time that we had proposed. Uh, Dr. Shava, I don't know if he's still on All right, the prof. call. Right, prof. Oh, okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. My apologies uh, for the, my mic was muted. Right. Um, uh, thank you, Ndabez Zinle, for the presentation. Uh, let me say I'm very much impressed. Most of the things you just have them under control. Just a few minor aspects. I won't waste much of your time. You have um, most of the things that have been raised by Dr. Marsha is just, the, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, most of those things you can see technical aspects those are issues that we can deal with as some of these things also have been indicated that uh, it's uh, it's the decision between you and prof and i also concur to that um my uh, few issues that i've seen um is just an issue of um going down that to um uh, let me just rush to the research design there I have my reservation uh, on that design that I've chosen of survey design. 
uh, if I can pose a question to the floor, yeah, is survey a design or a data collection method? In my view and in my reading so far, uh, I have not heard and I have not seen any book uh, that uh, indicates that survey is a research design. Survey is a data collection method under quantitative research. Uh, under quantitative research, we've got um, experiment as a design. Uh, we've got uh, um, a causal. We also have got um, uh, descriptive issues there. So you need to go back there and uh, fine tune that particular aspect. That's a very serious issue that you need to address. So you also need to indicate there uh, and uh, if you, because your study as it is, it is a causal, the proper research design there, it's causal. So you need to indicate that your proper research design is causal uh, research. And then indicate also that you are going to collect data once that becomes a cross-sectional um, a, a study as well. So under survey design, under design there, it, the correct research design for your study is causal research. And also under that um, subheading, you also need to address issues that are related to how many times are you collect, going to collect data. That is, as far as it stands, it's, it's, you're going to do it once off, therefore making this study a cross-sectional study. So need to uh, please incorporate that particular aspect. Um, a survey, uh, it's not um, a research design, it's a data collection um, a method or technique under quantitative research. Um, Let's also go down there to um, your research model. Um, as, as we have indicated earlier on, that you need to make sure that your, 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 your hypothesis um, and your, 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 what do you call this, your research model, they are very much aligned. I do see them. You have tried to show that uh, you've got a moderator, uh, that moderates the relationship between um, uh, let me just rush to your research model, where it is, um, where you have indicated that decent work is a moderator there, that model. But under precarious work uh, there, you have not uh, indicated the, those contract, constructs as well and dimensions so that it, it speaks, you know, uh, to the uh, hypothesis that you have formulated there. And then as well as decent work also indicate that those, you know, um, the, the yeah under decent work you've shown as as the the constructs, but under employee well being you have not shown us uh, what does that mean employee well being are you talking about a uh, mental health and physical health please indicate there what you are dealing with there under employee well being and um, I also I'm, I'm I'm one person who is very much uh, you know into these aspects of uh, your lines your hypothesis and this. You, you can then sum up in your, what do you call this, at the end of your discussion, that is under your results chapter, that the model that came out is this, you know, that, 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 becomes, that becomes a summary of it. But as it stands right now, we need to see the detailed aspects because remember, this is where the PhD comes from. Let's see how detailed your model is through the hypothesis, what goes where and which, what is it, what, what variable speaks to what? All those things need to be shown through your, 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 your hypothesis there. This model needs to, in other words, this is a diagrammatic representation of your, model, your, your hypothesis. Please make it live to that aspect. Let's also rush down to the issues of validity there. That's where other issues that I see. You are just talking about validity and the rest, but you're not showing us and not telling us the real issues, because if you're going to do structural equation modeling, definitely go deeper and tell us how you're going to apparently give us the, uh, the meat around the issues of validity, right? Because in, if you're going to do structural equation modeling, as you have indicated here, um, I need to go down to issues of validity then, right? That is 4.5, you know, the, if you're going to do issues, if you're going to do structural equation modeling, please tell us the issues that are related to discriminant validity. Also tell us issues that are related to e-convergence validity, because those are issues that, that are going to be, that, 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 that um, examiners will be mostly interested in. If you don't really uh, you know, uh, give us that information here, 
uh, that you're going to perform um, a convergent validity as well as discriminant validity, you are really falling short. It's like you have just ran 100 meters. Instead of you running 400 meters, you, are, you have ran about 320 meters. And you, you, you are giving up yet you are already uh, seeing the, the finish line and you don't want to do that. You have already started the race, please finish it up because that's where you are going there. And um, um, I, I think at the time being, those are the issues that I would just want to highlight at the present moment. Uh, my comments as well are coming more. Um, I'll, I'll forward my comments um, in the document, more of them to Prof, and then Prof will have a look at them. And then if you agree and disagree, you'll forward uh, those to the students so that the students will do. But anyway, good work. And one thing that I would like also to encourage um, uh, these two PhD students, their studies are very much similar. You guys, you need to collaborate, work hand in hand, uh, so that, uh, you know, uh, the, the issue of um, uh, who finishes and who doesn't finish is those are things that we're doing at high, high school, whereby the other one gets number one and the other one gets number two. But this is PhD. Your studies are related and your, 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 your methodology is similar. Uh, in uh, as much as the variables are made different in terms of which one is the in predictor and the rest, but the way you are doing this thing is similar and probably the literature that you're also going to read is similar. So I'll apparently encourage more collaboration between the two of you so that this project that we are having here becomes a serious success. And um, you know, I'm very much impressed. Thank you, Prof. Thanks, Dr. Shava. Uh, Dr. Chikungwa, I don't know if you're still with us. I know you had said that you've got a noise problem, so we, we could wait for your comments. I don't mind, but uh, your, your presence is uh, duly noted and appreciated. So we've had Dr. Marsha, Dr. Harry. Uh, thank you, Prof. I don't have much to add. Uh, the proposal, it seems as if it was well written. I haven't gone through it, it as well. Uh, but just a couple of questions uh, to the students. Uh, we have H1, which says that precarious work positively influences employee well-being. And if you go down, you will see that it says again that precarious work negatively influences well-being, which is which. And isn't that a hypothesis quite obvious that if you are doing precarious work, your well-being will be affected? Is it worth it doing a research on that hypothesis? And uh, the other thing that I want to pose to the student is that on the significance aspect, uh, yes, it, the part uh, was well written. However, the way that it is written, it seems as if uh, this research is guaranteed to solve uh, precarious work problems that we are having in Zimbabwe. You, as a researcher, you are offering recommendations to various people, to the policymakers. Yes, the study will contribute towards that, but do not make it sound as if this research will solve all the problems that we are facing with regards to decent work. We look at the way that you present your work. And another issue I also want to pose to the, to the student is that the student is focusing on a retail industry. Uh, if you look back in the content that they have, they are talking about precarious work being abandoned in Zimbabwe. So why the retail industry, if it is abandoned in, within the country? Why not focus on other sectors as well? Why only the retail sector? I think uh, those are the questions that are from my side. And the other thing is about the psychological aspects. I would love to hear what the student wanted to talk about when they were talking about the psychological aspect of uh, the research. That should be all from my side. Thank you, Prof. Th thanks, Dr. Harry. I, I appreciate it uh, as well. Um, Ngabisa, would you like to go ahead? Uh, yes, Just, uh, there's a few things. Uh, it is the missing references which appear in text, but they are not on the reference list. Uh, and also the font size. Uh, the references have different font sizes, so 
that's another thing that has to be taken into consideration. And lastly, the line spacing. So those are the only things that I noted while going through the reference list. Thank you, Prof. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for that. Colleagues, um, we, we're almost at the end. Um, I, I notice uh, in our presence could be other people who may not necessarily be directly linked to the students. Uh, I, I could also open up to them if there are any who would like to give commentary before we um, uh, take the next step of the program. So if anybody wants to say anything, uh, please go ahead uh, as we as we tying it to a close. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, go ahead. I don't know. Dr. Masharina. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, quite commendable stuff from uh, our students. Very much impressive work. And also, we can see a lot has been done. But just some Kesari uh, observations that I may need to share with others. Not particularly on any one of the of the of the of the of the proposals, but just for, for, for general observations uh, per, per se. Um, a lot of effort has been done, uh, but I've observed generally that uh, the introductions, like one uh, uh, reviewer has already highlighted, that's when we should give definition of the, of the key terms that are being used and how they relate to one another. This is generally missing. And then on the background, I also thought maybe we, rather than straight away going into Zimbabwe and the issues that are happening in Zimbabwe, why can't we take more or less like a funnel approach whereby we started looking at issues from a global perspective before perhaps we could narrow down to see how Zimbabwe issues relate to things happening globally. Uh, at least um, mm, that's one thing I, 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 I also observed in the, in the, in the, in the research. And also, um, uh, there's one research, one research that I observed, there were no research questions after research objectives. Maybe I almost the tradition that they, after your research ob objectives, you can also give your research um, questions that are synchronized to your, to your objectives. So people go away straight from the objectives to the hypothesis. And at times, without maybe having the, um, the, the model to show us where the arrows and the hypothesis with the arrows, maybe H1, H2, H3, H3, H4, and so on. And to show us how these things diagrammatically relate, so that at least we can marry the hypothesis from the diagrammatic representation of the model. Those are my observe my, my overall observations, Prof. Thank you. I think I'm done, Prof. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mashavira. Thank you. Um, thanks for those comments. Uh, colleagues, so the the impression I get uh, as a way of wrap up, and I'll come back to you, Dr. Mashavira, to give a vote of thanks, is the candidates are on schedule. Uh, however, we're going to give them time. Now, Dr. Nyambarwa will have to help us, uh, and that's a side discussion maybe on uh, what we need to do and how much turnaround they've got between now and the next um, uh, meeting. I want to say something here, particularly to the two students, that please do not take lightly the time of the colleagues that have managed to come to this um, uh, uh, mock defense. Uh, do not take lightly the documents that they are going to send, uh, thorough documents. If you're just going to gloat through the changes and just looking forward to the next part, I think it defeats the purpose of why we are here. 
So I, I, I trust the students will um, diligently apply their minds to the issues that have been raised here. And uh, we, we will go with that in terms of the direction and way forward. Let me give to Dr. Mashavira to close the meeting and then I'll just give back to you, uh, Chair, uh, uh, Dr. Mpani, to, to also give closing remarks and then we call it a day. I will also make available the recording of the meeting uh, tomorrow when I'm in East London, we'll talk to, to Nabisa to, to load it up for you and send it to the to the students. But I am appreciative of my colleagues uh, who have um, uh, managed to come to this exercise. I have bribed all of them with a copy of the latest HR textbook that we are producing soon. But I think it's not that that's important. It's their comments and expertise, uh, people that I've enjoyed working with um, and, and will continue to work with. So I'm, I'm very appreciative. And let me also say to Dr. Mpani as the chair, these are good potential external examiners, potential um, supervisors uh, uh, for your program. So feel free, we can make available the contacts of Dr. Masha, Dr. Harry, uh, Dr. Chikungwa and uh, Dr. Shava. So I, I give over to you, Dr. Mashavira, for the vote of thanks. Thank you, Prof. And once more, uh, thank you, colleagues. I would like to really appreciate Professor Chiyamurind and uh, the team from South Africa. Um, if I hear you, if I heard you well during the introductory remarks with our colleagues from 40A and others from Water Sisulu, we are so thankful of the contributions you have made. And we really appreciate the effort and the time that you have committed to this uh, to this uh, mock uh, defense sessions. We will really appreciate no amount of words could uh, express our heartfelt uh, gratitude towards this gesture. And we continue to, we expect to continue working together in the future. To our students, um, Patients Mabika and Dave Zitle, Dave Zitle, we are so appreciative of uh, the work that you've done so far and uh, the milestones you've been able to achieve. I know it has been quite a, a, a long journey but we are so thankful because here we are. And uh, I would like to say we've made history because this is our first mock uh, defense uh, in the department for PhD students. And we are really proud about all this effort. I would like also to thank uh, the supervisor, Professor Chiyamurindi and uh, Professor Maung uh, Dr. Maunganitze for the effort that uh, you have been showing the patients, the resilience, uh, the fortitude, especially against a uh, quite daunting circumstances, and especially Dr. Maungani, they know that you're not uh, in the best of, uh, uh, of conditions, but all the same, you have been pushing and pulling through. We really appreciate that in the department. I would also like to thank colleagues in the department for coming. Without you, this could have been a flop. would like to thank our uh, research coordinator, Dr. Nyambaro, for running around behind the scenes to make these things move and work. And uh, our chairperson for such a good work, uh, we are really happy because we are breaking new ground and we are proud to have you as, a, as our leader. And maybe our dean of absentia and the university administration, uh, most of whom are, could not take part in this uh, uh, viva, we really appreciate them for the support and also for everything else that makes uh, us realize our, our dreams as academics. Uh, with these remarks, I'd like to say thank you once more. I'll hand over uh, to Prof. Chiamrindi, or whoever maybe is coming in after me, or Dr. Mpani, I'm not sure. But um, uh, that's our, my remarks, and a uh, good day. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Mpani. I think you're next. Uh, thank you, Prof. Nyamurindi. Uh, I don't have much to say, but uh, just to thank you for organizing this viva. Uh, and also thank you to Dr. Chikwangwa, Ayeri, Masha, Dr. Shava, and Nikhil 
Uh, you added value to this uh, whole thing. Uh, we have a number of students intending to do PhD studies, to PhD studies, but are failing to get supervisors. So definitely get in touch, guys. We need your assistance. Thank you once more. Uh, thank you, thank you, and also thank you to our rising star, Ngabisa Nikelo. I think you are free to go home now, Ngabisa. You did a very good job, and uh, we'll, we'll meet tomorrow to uh, consolidate all the reports. So, colleagues, thank you very much for, for joining us. It's been a learning curve, uh, but I think the important things have been said, and I hope the students will enact these changes, and I really appreciate the collegiality that has been shown uh, here. And here is the, uh, Dr. Mpani's request, Dr. Chikungwa, Dr. Harry, Dr. Masha, and Dr. Shava, that uh, they have PhD students who are willing to work. And this is a good platform in which you can also uh, contribute to the cause of advancing scholarship. I would also urge my colleagues, um, there is funding through the National Institute for the Humanities and Social Sciences uh, you, I think the next call is coming out soon. You can use that as a way of uh, getting funding. I know we are scheduled to come to Zimbabwe sometime first week of February next year. So I will definitely make uh, that opportunity available and a way uh, to the colleagues in South Africa so that they also can um, uh, visit Great Zimbabwe and in the afternoon go for a tour of the Great Zimbabwe ruins. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, have yourself a wonderful evening, and uh, thank you for all the deliberations. And thank you to the two students for uh, uh, being vulnerable to the comments and the uh, inputs that have been given to assist them to become better. Thank you very much. Enjoy the afternoon. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.